Hi, we are the MATLAB Pros Cubed, and we made an energy planning and design tool as our final project. Hi, my name is Courtney Gang, and to contribute to this project, I took the pictures of our cities from Google Maps and scaled them. I created the blank outlines for the GUIs, which we'll later use. I wrote the script to calculate the bill of materials. I wrote the script to calculate the total solar energy output, as well as the script to calculate the total wind energy output. And I worked with Laura to place the scripts of our smaller codes within the functions of the GUI. Hi, my name is Laura Matrillis, and to contribute to this project, I wrote the scripts to replace the pixels in the images with grids, um, to locate the boxes in the grid that the user clicked on, to fill in the boxes that the user clicked on with color, and I worked with Courtney on the readme file as well as placing the scripts within the functions of the GUI. Hi, my name is Kyle Turner. I also helped create the Bill of Materials uh, document. I wrote a custom algorithm to maximize solar panels in our grid, and I also did some of the price and number calculations for all the basic functions with the Bill of Materials. And lastly, I wrote an M by N text document that converts our picture into a text document that you can print out. And now, let's, let's take, take a, a look, look at our project. project. This is our first GUI, Renewable Energy Planning and Design Tool. It allows you to load a previous image that you've worked on before, or you can select the city here. So let's just go with San Francisco. This is our second GUI screen. Um, you have the option to choose from a list of solar panels, and then you can place them wherever you want on your grid. You can also choose from a list of wind turbine options. You can place as many of either as you'd like on the grid. And if you want to start over, you can click reset. The map will be blank again. When I'm done, I'm going to click finish. This is the third GUI that will pop up. It gives five options to the user. The first option is to create and calculate the total amount of wind energy. Also, this can calculate the total amount of solar energy produced from the image. If you would like to save the image as a text output, this pops up and there is a legend that shows you which of the panels and which of the turbines is placed into each of the boxes. This GUI allows you to save the image for later use and create a bill of materials which has the prices of all the panels and at the very bottom the total cost of all the materials. Hi, this is Courtney, and this is a script that will run our first GUI. The first GUI allows the user to select a city to work with, or to load a previous image. The city selection works by taking the value of the drop-down menu. So for example, the value of San Francisco is 2, the value of Atlanta is 3, and the value of Albuquerque is 4. And based off of that, this saves our picture that I already took as our variable, which we will use in the second GUI, which we titled New Schnazzy GUI. Likewise, if three is chosen, then the city of Atlanta will show. Also, this GUI will close. The other option we have is to load a previous image. This works by taking that saved image that we've previously saved, naming it to the image, which is then used in Snazzy GUI. And lastly, this code will then close this GUI. One of the key aspects of our program is the use of global variables. Saving variables as global allows us to access their indices and their values when we change from one GUI to the next. This is Courtney, and this is the second GUI. To create this, um, I first took a picture from Google Maps. The picture is 549 pixels by 549 pixels. Based off of that and a conversion, each of these boxes is 15 feet by 15 feet, which we'll use in the upcoming calculations. Hi, this is Laura. For the first part of our code for the second GUI, we set the axis, which is this whole area where you see your image. We placed an image there by reading the image that was selected in the previous GUI, and then using a loop to create horizontal lines by using the width that we wanted for each grid square and placing it in there and replacing the pixels with black pixels at that point and then doing the same for vertical lines by doing a very similar loop. 
Then we displayed it with the function IM show. Next, for the pop-up menus where you can select which solar panel option or wind turbine option you would like, we have a function called pop-up menu 1, which is in charge of the solar options. It did the same thing where it created the horizontal and vertical lines on our image, and then it determined where the user clicked on the image by using a loop to determine its location. Then once the location was determined, it filled in the box on the grid based on a color that was related to which selection they chose. For example, if they chose the first solar option, it would turn the red component to 122, the green component to 0, and the blue component to 0. Then, for other choices, it would change it to different colors. Here you can see that choices equals choices plus one, and that's because each time it clicked, the number of times it stored their clicks for that choice would increase by one. The same thing happened for pop-up menu two, where it was wind options, and it's the same procedure, only for different values and colors. Next, there's the push-up button that resets the image. It reset, it reset all the choices back to zero, and then replaced the image in the axis to the original image. And finally, there was the finish button that opened the next GUI and closed the current GUI. Third GUI, as you can see, we have a couple different options. First one here, uh, save as text output. You can see the code for it here we have. This basically opens uh, I am read saved image, which is the image saved from when you select the the boxes for the you know the, the wind turbines and the solar panels, and you put them on the grid. Um, here we have a couple for statements, um, one to sixty one, and the x and y components basically represents uh, each box. Um, for each if statement, there is a pixel that we chose in the middle of each box, and we test it in the red, green, and blue components to see if it matches um, the ones that we set for our solar panels and wind turbines. If it's not that, it goes through, uh, through all the else ifs, and uh, if it is, then it basically sets it as a letter here. As you can see, this one is a, a so it would set um, that box as A in our text document. And then it goes through the wind turbines and it ends, and if there aren't any matches, then it leaves a blank space in our text document. Here's the basic format, the parameters for our text document. We have a key there that shows you which solar panels and turbines represent which letters. And let's go ahead and run that. All right, so here's what it looks like. And as you can see, we selected one earlier. There it is down there, A, which represents the maximum number of solar panels um, for the SunForce model that would fit into that box. We have our final uh, bill of materials document here. And this is basically from the Create Bill of Materials uh, option there, the push button. Here's the parameters for that. And above we have um, how these matrices were, were saved as strings so that we could just put them in to the formats below. Here we have a for uh, loop to, um, it's basically a custom function to maximize the number of solar panels in a given box because all of them are different dimensions. And so this basically sees how many can fit top to bottom, left to right, and then the extra space left over, we try turning uh, each solar panel 90 degrees to see if we can fit any more in that remaining space. Um, and for the wind turbine, the diameter is 10 up to 15. Um, our boxes are 15 by 15, and so you can only fit one wind turbine per box. To do the calculations for the bill of material, these are the given data that was given from the project, and the heights and the width, which we assumed to be the two biggest dimensions. And then I created another loop that would create that made the total price of the panels by taking the number of times uh, or the number of panels in each box by their individual price. Oh my! Hi, I'm Laura. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is we're Kyle. Make, we're making this good. <laughs>